Hey there! Welcome to our beginner series for V-Ray for 3DS Max, designed to help you get started with the product and start rendering in no time. In this video, I'm going to show you how to animate a fly-through camera, animate scene assets, and set up your render settings to output a whole animation. We have a simple exterior scene. We'll begin with setting up the time configuration. There are presets for industry standards like NTSC film or we could set up a custom FPS, usually 25 or 30. For now, NTSC at 30 frames per second works fine. Then we can adjust the length of time for our animation, which in our case will be 100 frames as it's set by default. Next, let's animate the camera to zoom into the house like it's on a dolly. I'll select the camera and animate it moving. But first, we need to change the keyframe tangents to linear so there is no easing in and out of the motion. And in order to record the animation, we'll turn on the Auto key. This makes a keyframe each time we change an animatable parameter. In our case, as we move the camera, it'll place keys at its start position on key 0 and its end position at key 100. I'll switch off Auto Key now so we don't record any more animations and keyframes. Let's go back to frame 0, and we can turn on the camera's motion blur to give a nice subtle effect to all moving objects, including the camera's motion. Be aware that it may slightly up the render times if there's a lot of motion in our frame. As you'll see, the animation with motion blur has a great smooth scrolling effect. Our timeline might be a bit slow in the viewport based on the scene's geometry, so we'll make a preview animation. We'll adjust a few settings depending on the quality of the preview we want and hit Create. Let's preview. The animation looks nice and smooth. You'll notice I've pre-animated some other assets like the tree, which is a proxy with a loaded animated limbic file. I've also animated some toy balls in the pool, moved by the wind, and the curtains that reveal the beautiful interior. Now let's move on to how we can animate the V-Ray Sun parameters, particularly clouds, for a nice time-lapse effect. We already have them activated, but to animate them, let's go to the last frame where we'll record their final form. We'll turn on Auto Key so we can have them moving and we'll animate their offset on the X and Y axis. To help them change shape, we'll animate their phase. We're now all set to start setting up our render settings. Right now, we're set up to render a single frame. I'll change it to Active Time Segment to render the entire timeline. We'll change the resolution to Standard Full HD TV Next, we have to set the output file. It's important to note that the output file of an animation is actually a series of images, not a video file. We'll save a sequence of single frame images, which will later combine into a video file, a pretty nice workflow. So, we'll set up a PNG file in the standard 3 DS Max output slot for quick previews. We'll also activate the V-Ray Raw image output and assign an EXR to contain all our render elements, giving us a high-quality, lossless compression output. It's not recommended to set a maximum render time for animation as this might cause flickering due to different noise levels calculated for the same time limit based on the frame's complexity. One way to prevent this is by switching to bucket mode, where we only have minimum and maximum subdivisions and a noise threshold. We will increase the noise threshold a bit to save on render time. Don't worry, as we'll denoise the render later. Our GI settings are okay as they are, but we can set light cache to animation to avoid flickering and light leaks, especially in interiors. Let's add some render elements now. I'll add the back to beauty element to get all passes we might need for compositing. We only need them if we're sure we'll use them later as they create large files, use more RAM, and some might increase render times. 
we'll also add the denoiser element. When rendering an animation, it's recommended to set the denoiser to only generate elements and not to denoise right away. This is because if we have it denoise automatically, it'll do each frame individually, which might cause flickering between frames. To prevent this, we'll leave them for now and use the denoise elements to denoise them later in the standalone or another compositing software. We're ready to render now. I've sped up the rendering for you, but it usually takes around 30 minutes per frame, and we have an animation of 100 frames. As you can see, it takes some time to render one frame and start the next one. We can leave it rendering, but if you want to speed things up, we can use the Chaos Cloud service. When rendering complex animations, it's a good idea to consider network rendering. This means sending the job to a Render Node Manager or Chaos Cloud, so multiple machines can work on individual frames simultaneously. We'll click the Chaos Cloud button, and when the dialog appears, just click Export Animation and we're ready to submit the scene. We can check the job name and resolution before submitting for rendering. The default output files of Chaos Cloud jobs are always EXRs and JPEGs. We can see our frames queuing and rendering. Around 100 machines are starting the rendering at the same time. We can click on one of the frames to review it, and we can see all the frames that have started rendering appear and slowly reveal themselves. We can see the job progress bar in the top right corner updating. Once all frames are complete, we can play the whole sequence right in the browser to preview it. Let's enjoy the result full screen where we have some options and controls. If we're happy, we can download just the preview as a compiled MP4 file, which is easy to share and play. Bear in mind it's a light but compressed version of our render sequence, so quality may vary. Or we can download the whole image sequence with the EXR files and passes that we can use to compose the sequence. Now let's see how we can denoise the already rendered and downloaded EXR sequence. We have the whole sequence here, and let's start the standalone denoiser tool. We'll look for the EXR sequence and select a frame. The denoiser tool will recognize there's a whole animation and ask us to confirm. We can now adjust some settings that are specific for standalone, like the number of frames to blend when denoising. Some of them, like engine and preset, we recognize from the V-Ray denoiser element in 3DS Max. Let's leave them to the default options and click Denoise. We can see the frame preview pop up and the console in the background showing us each frame's progress and output. We can find the denoised EXRs in the original folder with the suffix denoised in the name. Each denoised frame will show up one after the other until you have the whole sequence. Then we can combine them together in a video file with the software of our choice to get the final result. In my case, I will use Chaos Player to do this. Let's open Chaos Player and preview the EXR sequence. It looks good. Now we just go to the File menu, select Save Layer As, and this will allow us to save our animation as an MP4 file. We could adjust the compression level if we wanted to, but let's keep it at 100 for now. And there we have it. Our sequence of EXR frames is now an easily previewable MP4 file. This is how we can render a simple animation. Before you go, make sure to download our project files linked in the description. Also, don't forget to check out the rest of the videos in our beginners series or have a look at our blog and documentation for more tips and tricks. I hope you found this tutorial useful, 
And if so, please like, share, and subscribe. See you soon.